engaged in a lawful warfare, defensive war. The state, this authority is in the hand of the state. Not a single individual. Let me make it clear. Let me make it very sound and profound and clear. Let me remove any kind of confusion and ambiguity that not a single person, not a single scholar, not a single leader, not a group of individuals, not any organization has an authority to declare jihad on the surface of earth or to declare warfare. If any individual or any group of individuals takes up arms and stand killing the people, maybe in enemy lands, that would be regarded as terrorism and this cannot be regarded as jihad. The reason is, even if lawful warfare, Holy Prophet said, he said, you cannot kill the women during the warfare in the battlefield. Holy Prophet saw, he said, you cannot kill women, you cannot kill children, you cannot kill priests, you cannot kill diplomats and ambassadors, you cannot kill the people worshipping in churches and synagogues, you cannot burn the trees, you cannot burn the people, and you cannot cut down the arms. So in, during the warfare, during war, Islam gives a message of peace. Islam does not allow the killing of non-combatants. Islam does not allow the killing of civilians. Does not allow the killing of innocent people. If Islam does not permit you killing of women and children and non-combatant civilians even in the battlefield and warfare, how does Islam permit you to commit suicide bombings or to commit terrorist acts? So we want to make it clear Islam has no responsibility. If anybody is committing suicide attacks, he is a criminal. He is not representative of Islam. If anybody is committing any act of terrorism on any pretext, on any conditionality, that terrorist is a criminal. He is out of the ambit of Islam. He has no link with Prophet Muhammad, no link with Quran, no link with Islam. <laughs> concluding, concluding my talk, I want to conclude. Look at the message of Islam given by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was in, it comes in Bukhari and Muslim, it is Muttafaq Alayh. He stated to his companions, that there was a lady in Israelites, she had a cat and she tortured her, did not provide the cat food with food and water. Ultimately the cat died. Holy Prophet said, Almighty Allah punished that lady and threw into the hellfire because she became the reason of killing of a cat. Another, it comes in Bukhari and Muslim. Holy Prophet said, a lady was going and she saw a dog. He was about to die because of thirst. She provided water to the dog and saved his life. Prophet of Islam, the prophet of humanity, the prophet of mankind, the prophet of mercy, the prophet of compassion, the prophet of kindness. He stated that because that lady saved the life of a dog, Almighty Allah forgave her sins and sent her to the heavens and Jannah. When Holy Prophet stated this, that that lady went to Jannah because she saved the life of a dog. The question is, companion asked, Ya Rasulullah, we would be rewarded if we commit the acts of kindness with animals, Holy Prophet, yes, said yes. Any act of mercy and kindness with any living being, you will be rewarded on the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, 
and my dear brothers and sisters in humanity, I want to ask the religion of Islam and the prophet of Islam who says that saving the life of a dog will lead you to the Jannah and violently killing a cat will leave you to Jahannam. If this is the teaching of Islam, then Islam, how can Islam permit you to take the lives of innocent, non-combatant civilian people? Islam will never allow. And this was the practice adopted by Holy Prophet, adopted by the Khulafai Rashidin. Holy Prophet and companions used to give the Aman. And the Aman, the declaration, the agreement of safety and security given to the people of Najran. I am ending my words on that paragraph. Holy Prophet said that God is the protectorate and Muhammad the messenger is the guardian of all lawful rights on the people of Najran and they were Jews and Christians by majority. Those who are present, those who are absent, their lives are safe, their families are secure, their affiliates are secure, their possessions are secure, their houses are secure, their belongings are secure, they have religious freedom, religious practice is free, everything the bishop would not be removed from his job any priest would not be removed from his job and all people busy in worshiping according to their own religion they are given full protection and holy prophet said that they will never be oppressed or nobody would be allowed in my ummah to commit any crime or act of injustice against these people because allah and prophet muhammad has provided them the security so the non-muslims whether living in non-Muslim Muslim states, in Islamic countries, whether they are living in their own non-Muslim countries, my last message, I am leaving with this message. My dear brothers and sisters, you are citizens of Britain. You are citizens of Europe. You have your passport, your citizenship. You are enjoying your rights, legal rights, constitutional rights, judicial rights, financial privileges social economic supports, your job, your salary, you are getting every facility here as other non-Muslim citizens are getting. If you are getting all facilities, so how can a person or who is a true Muslim can be supposed getting all facilities of the citizenship? How can he take up arms or how can he commit suicide bombing against non-Muslim brother citizens? This would be a haram act, an act against Islam. For those who want to still, those brothers who want to still fight against civilian non-Muslim brothers of the countries where you are enjoying the facilities, then they should not live here as a citizen. They should leave the country. They should do hijrah. They should go back to their home because this character is against Islam and the conduct of Prophet Muhammad. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. sister are you ready to declare this give a declaration showing a unity of global peace unity that you condemn every act of terrorism committed by any person or state and you are for peace and you are against suicide bombings and against terrorism do you agree with this raise your hands raise your hands alhamdulillah alhamdulillah this declaration is passed I congratulate the organizers of Global Peace and Unity Conference. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.